I've got a liquid here with a really rare property. It's pumpkin seed oil, and I've put some on a Petri dish so you can see in more detail. There's a thin layer of oil covering the base of the Petri dish, making it green. But when the oil bunches up, it turns this beautiful shade of red. And that's because pumpkin seed oil is dichromatic. And I want to explain what diachromatism is. To do that, I need to explain how color works and I need to explain how we perceive color. And those are quite complex subjects. So I'm gonna simplify things for this explanation. And then at the end, for anyone who's interested, I'll go into a bit more detail and I'll explain the simplifications that I've made. So first of all, how does color work? How do things get their color? Well, I've made this drink for myself. You'll see that it's bright green. And the reason we can see this drink at all is because it's currently being illuminated by white light. And you might know that white light is just all the colors of the visual spectrum mixed together. And what happens is this drink absorbs some of that white light, but the rest it allows to pass through or transmit. So it absorbs some of the light and it transmits the rest. But the important thing is the amount of light that it transmits and the amount of light that it absorbs is different depending on the color of the light. And I can show you that on a graph. So here we go. This is the visual spectrum. This is all the colors that we can see. I haven't labeled my axes because uh, I don't give a fuck. Along the bottom is wavelength, so you can see that red light has a longer wavelength than blue light, and green light has a wavelength in between. And up the side is transmission, so how much of each wavelength of light, how much of each color of light does the drink transmit? So we can show that now. There we go. So this drink absorbs most of the blue light, it absorbs most of the red light, but it transmits most of the green light. So we've got all this green light passing through the liquid into our eyes, and that's why we perceive the drink as green. But how do we perceive color at all? How do our eyes tell us about the color of the world around us? Well, it's all to do with these cells that we have at the back of our eyes. They're called cone cells. And there are three types of cone cells. There are cone cells that are sensitive to the red part of the spectrum, cone cells that are sensitive to the green part of the spectrum, and cone cells that are sensitive to the blue parts of the spectrum. So if we're looking at something in the world and it's red, that means there's loads of red light coming into our eyes. That red light is stimulating our red cones. They send a message to our brain, and that's how we know we're looking at something red. Great, but what about pumpkin seed oil? Pumpkin seed oil has a more complex transmission spectrum. It might look something like this. So you can see that it absorbs almost all of the blue end of the spectrum. It transmits almost all of the green part of the spectrum and the red part of the spectrum. This is the important thing. It absorbs most of the red part of the spectrum except for a thin sliver of red light. And it lets 100% of that thin sliver through. And if you look at the area of green on this graph, that tells you how much light is stimulating your green cones, and it's a lot. Whereas the area of the red band here is small, your red cones aren't getting much stimulation. So when you look at a thin layer of pumpkin seed oil, it appears green. So what happens when you pour more of the pumpkin seed oil in and you have a thicker layer? Well, you would expect a thicker layer of pumpkin seed oil to absorb more light, and because pumpkin seed oil absorbs some green light, we expect it to absorb more. So that green bump should go down. But the oil absorbs 0% of that thin red line. It transmits 100%. So if you make the layer thicker, it still absorbs 0% meaning 100% of that red light is still transmitted. And if you make the layer thick enough, that green bump will go down and down and down and down and down until all you're left with is that thin red line. And at that point, you only have red light coming into your eyes, stimulating your red cones, and that is why a thick layer of pumpkin seed oil looks red. And that is how dichromatism works.
So I promised I would explain some of the simplifications that I made in this explanation. The first one is that our visual system is more complex than just simply having cones for red light, cones for green light, and cones for blue light. In reality, the sensitivity of our red cones and our green cones overlap a lot, like in this diagram here. Your visual system is doing these complex calculations, like what's the difference between the signal coming from the red cones and the green cones. But after all those calculations, it's as if you have cones for red light, cones for green light, and cones for blue light. The other simplification that I made is that the transmission spectrum of pumpkin seed oil is more complex. It looks like this. So there isn't that thin band of red transmission. Instead, the red transmission ramps up towards that end of the spectrum. But it's almost like there's a thin band because it ramps up towards the edge of what we're able to perceive. So it's like there's a thin band of red at, at the edge of our perception. So yes, it's a bit more complicated, but I hope the simplifications weren't too painful and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.